Welcome to The Real World. My name is Cameron, joined by Carson right. on episode 103 of The Real World Podcast. We're talking about all about our favorite cinematic hidden gems. Thank you so much for joining us here on The Real World Podcast. Make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified of all our videos. We're movie fanatics. Look at this. All these movies here. I talk about these all the time on yeah, the show. We have a vast collection here. Vast collection. Um, and... Uh, we talk about all kinds of different things in relation to movies, old movies, new movies, streaming, in theaters, new to 4K and Blu-ray. That's right. Uh, Blu-ray hunting videos. Um, we do trailer reactions, movie news. Um, check out all those videos on the channel right now. But today on this podcast, the podcast is our long-form video. Yes. Where we go in-depth on some movies that mm-hmm. we really adore. So, And recently we've adopted a, a new format. Which yes. I'm a big fan of. Personally. I do too. I like this format of the draft. I mean, draft. I mean, me, me, personally, me personally, I love the draft. <laughs> yeah, I do too. <laughs> I do too. So the draft idea, we did this a couple of weeks ago for our big hundredth episode. Right. Um, we did it like sports teams. You know, they sure. draft players to their team. Yeah. So, so we're, we're drafting, drafting movies to our list. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So you got to vote for at the end. You got to vote for who has the best list. That's kind of the whole thing here. It's a little bit more of a competition. Okay. But I can steal his. I don't know. I don't know everything on his list. He doesn't know everything on my list. So we can go back and forth. And if I take one of his, he's got to go down to another one. So we start with a big pool of movies, and we kind of That's right. whittle it down. Yeah. Um, and so this is going to be a fun one. Today we're talking about hidden gems. Hidden gems. What is a hidden gem? Well, to, to you. me, to me, what I what I define a hidden gem as is a movie that I think is great. Sure. That no one has ever seen or heard of. An unpopular film. Very unpopular. I talked about these movies and people go, "What is that? I've never heard of that. What, right. what is that about? I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that is." Because there's so many movies that have been made, right? Millions, maybe billions at this point of movies. Probably movies <laughs> are made every day. Years. So yeah. So um, there's a lot out there, mm-hmm. and people don't know about a lot of these. So that's what we're focusing on today: is movies that people don't know about, that's people right. haven't heard of. Uh, is that was that your mindset? Where, did you pretty have a much, different mindset? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. To me, a hidden gem is just uh, a movie that's kind of underrated, uh, sure. doesn't get the praise that it deserves. Yep. I usually look at um, whether or not it f- failed or succeeded at the box office initially. Definitely. Um, people's responses to it, right? Word of mouth sure. kind of can destroy a movie. But there's some that that are cult hits. That's that's the differentiation. Yeah. Is, some are cult classics. Right. That over time have grown in popularity. Right. They right. weren't popular initially, but like, now they're like really Labyrinth, popular. Like Labyrinth. Like Dark Crystal. Blade Runner. Blade Runner. Movies that, you know, they get sequels decades later. Tron. Or, yeah, yeah. things like that. So uh, that's not what we're dealing with. That's another podcast we'll do in the future. Sure. Cult classics, our favorite cult classics. But these are hidden gems. So most of these titles, you probably won't even recognize the titles. Sure. Um, some of you may, and that's great we got to spread the word on these movies, so that's why we're doing this. So join us in the comments. Uh, make sure you leave a list of your favorite hidden gems below. And again, make sure you let us know who had the best list. Cameron, that's me. Or Carson, that's him. That's him. So we're going to get things kicked off here. You're the guest, so you get to go first. Okay. You get the first draft pick. What do you got? My number one. Number one hidden gem. It's got to be number one. <laughs> it's the Iron Giant. Of course. Now, a lot of people of may have heard of Iron Giant. It's grown it's a little bit of, in popularity. When it got its Blu-ray release and it was re-released right. in theaters for yep. the signature edition, yep. a lot of people saw it for the first time. Sure. Uh, this is Brad Bird's first movie. Mm-hmm. He did Incredibles. He did Ratatouille, a lot of people's favorite Pixar movies. Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, the best, the best Mission Impossible movie. Hey, another hidden gem. It's not on my list. I just thought of it. Tomorrowland. 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 Yeah, I, I was yeah. on the fence about putting that on here, but... That's a good one. Um, Iron Giant's my favorite movie ever. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty much perfect in every way. Yeah. I wouldn't change a thing about it. Yep. Uh, even down to Harry Connick Jr. playing a uh, junkyard man, yes. junkyard artist. The junkyard beatnik. It's so good. Great. Um, it's a brilliant movie. Uh, yes. Just about kind of like a dog and his boy story. Right, yeah. Dog and his uh, boy but and with, his robot. But with a giant <laughs> robot. With a giant 100-foot robot right. in the 1950s. And uh, mm. yeah, Iron Giant's my number one pick. It's a great me, selection. Though. Everyone should see it. And almost no one has. I agree. It's definitely one that more people need to watch. I love the 50s setting, that, you know, sci-fi, B-movie, aesthetic, um, and the Cold War paranoia. Yeah. All of it. I mean, every aspect of the the movie. The pitch that Brad Bird 
gave to the executives yeah. when they wanted to make it was, what if a gun had a soul and mm-hmm. didn't want to be a gun? Ooh, great. That was the pitch. And then he started giving the story. And we get more into that in uh, the signature edition, which includes the giant's dream scene. Sure. Which I'm a pretty big fan of that I'm, scene. I'm not a big fan of that. Really? Okay. I, 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 I kinda, like it. It kind of rubs me the wrong way. I kind of I kind of like the movie better without it, but I'm glad it's in there and we can watch it. Sure. You know what I mean? It kind of reveals the giant's backstory, um, which I think is pretty Yeah, if you don't know, the, the signature edition has one additional scene yeah. that kind of gives you more information about right. the giant and where he's from. Yeah, so check it I out. Think it's a little unnecessary, but... Sure, but again, cool. I'm, I'm glad it was created for that signature edition. You can watch it sure. if you want. So what is your top pick? My top pick is an obscure movie. Okay. No one's heard of. I would hope so. As all these That's movies kind of should the list. be, right? Yeah. It's called Will Penny. Will Penny? I, now, I haven't even heard of Will Penny. <laughs> is this a new movie you've Good. seen recently? Yes, I saw it very recently. Um, Kino Lorber put out okay. a Blu-ray edition of this film. Very cool. This movie stars one of my favorite actors of all time, mm-hmm. Charlton Heston. It's a classic. He's one of the best. Um, it's directed by Tom Grease, who directed a Western I like called 100 Rifles. Will Penny is also a Western. Okay. So Charlton Heston stars as a cowboy. Great. A uh, very authentic life of a cowboy we get to see at the beginning of the film. Okay. And then... Um, as the movie kind of evolves, he gets involved with this widow and her young son. And mm. that's what the majority of the movie is about, this relationship hmm. um, between these three characters. Interesting. And it's beautifully shot, all in the West, American West. It was uh, made in 1968. That's mm-hmm. when it was released. And this Blu-ray, uh, I had to get it because as I was reading about the movie, I ended up finding out that this was Charlton Heston's favorite movie he ever made. Oh, really? So it was his own favorite huh. project that he was ever part of. That's very interesting. And of course, he was a part of huge movies like Ben Hur, of course, Ten, Ten Commandments, Commandments yeah, uh, uh, Planet of the Apes. It doesn't get you bigger. Know? I mean, like some big movies. Yeah. Um, and personally, for him, this was his favorite role that he ever portrayed. Hmm. I'll, I'll definitely have to check it out. What is it called? Will Penny. Will Penny. Yes. Okay. Worth a lot more than a penny. Sure. Sure. Um, it's definitely worth checking out. Tons and tons of great character interactions, dialogue, awesome. um, scenery, just a really, really solid Western. Mm-hmm. And I would I would agree it's one of definitely one of Teston's best roles. Okay. He's, he's a great it's a great layered, interesting mm. character. Mm-hmm. And uh, very cool. where it ends up, very unexpected. It's gonna the get ending, emotional. The ending the ending <laughs> People, some people might not like the ending of this. Controversial, controversial ending. But it's really good. So, okay. had to pick that one for my good number pick, one. Good pick, good uh, pick. What do you got for number two? My number two is Sinbad, Legend of the Seven oh, Seas. Of course. This Sinbad is, is the best. This is a DreamWorks movie. Yeah. Um, early days during DreamWorks. During an interesting time. Yeah. This is the early 2000s, 2003. Right. During was animation. Um, yes. Mm-hmm. Animation was currently in the transition from 2D to 3D. Yeah. Because right. Toy Story was a right. massive hit, and yeah. Pixar was starting to make a bunch of, like, the biggest movies ever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so before DreamWorks did Shrek, and before they kind of moved into the whole like full th- full 3D, 3D CG, Madagascar yeah. penguins, yep. minions. Mm-hmm. You know, before they all went bad, um, they made good movies. They did. And in my opinion, the best is Sinbad: Legend of the Seven Seas. This yeah, movie is a swashbuckling movie. adventure mm-hmm, mm-hmm. about Brad Pitt. Who plays Sinbad. That's right. Who goes on this awesome adventure on the Chimera, this super cool Mm. pirate ship that he has that has, like, spear hooks that come out the side. Yeah. Um, And it's all about getting the Book of Peace, this great MacGuffin from from this ultimate, like, villainess Uh, character. Eris. Eris, who's just, like, an awesome villain. The animation in this movie is fantastic. It is. It It blends 2D and 3D together in really interesting ways. Definitely. Uh, that was common a lot in the 2000s. Yeah, right. And to me, this movie just works. I mean, this is oh, a classic for me. So I've watched fun. this endlessly. It's so funny. Very funny. Great characters. Great, great ensemble great, cast. Yeah, great action. Yeah. Um, and a really good story about proving yourself. Yeah. About not being as as evil as everybody says that you are. Right, right. Um, because... Sinbad has an interesting relationship with his best friend Proteus, yes. who's like the king of this area. So by Joseph Fiennes, who does a great job sure. in that role. Sure, yeah, absolutely. He's the kind of moral upright Right, one, exactly. And Sinbad's kind of the friend who kind of went bad to the right. pirating. Exactly, um, exactly. And then you have 
Catherine Zeta Jones. Marina. As Marina. Of course. Who's kind of in between the two. Right. And yeah, that three, that do, that trio there, mm-hmm. they, they all work together very well. Definitely. And uh, yeah, great pick. I, like I said, the action in it is thrilling. It is. The music is superb. Uh, really, yeah, really great, really fun movie. Come watch that anytime. For sure. It's one of those great ones. So excellent pick. Well, staying in the animation realm, jumping over to Fox Animation. Okay. Titan AE. Excellent. Had pick. to make the list. I'm glad you picked it early because <laughs> I had to. Yeah, it's one of my favorite movies ever. Honestly, it's, it's, it's five stars. It is. I it's think we have the box right here, here somewhere, it's right? right here. We've got it right here. It's, it's they've never it released says, it on Blu-ray. It says this is the movie Star Wars fans have been waiting for. Yeah, that's what it says is, on the box. This is right after. Uh, and I'd say episode it's one, Phantom Menace came out in the year 3028. Yeah, the Dredge. Oh, the Dredge is so cool. The Dredge are these villains who are these aliens who attack Earth. And they just totally destroy Earth. They made it, they're made of pure energy. That's right. They totally destroy the Earth. Another 2000s 3D 2D combo. Yep, a lot of 3D movie. and 2D animation. A lot of violence in this movie. A lot of violence. They they, they destroy the Earth. Humanity gets away <laughs> on these ships. That's right. Uh, there's only a few humans left. This young human named Kale. Kale. Well, r- the humans are the aliens, really. Right. And this because movie, yeah, because we have no home jumps, world. It jumps 15 years. Right. And then the humans are living out there with all these aliens. Mm-hmm. There's only a few humans left. Yeah. And uh, Kale has the map. Right. In his genome is sure. the map to mm-hmm. the Titan. Yeah. yeah. Um, AE stands for After Earth. So the Titan It's is basically Space Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. It's very. It's an excellent movie. So I highly good. recommend it any way that you can watch it. I think it was on Hulu for a little while. Was it? Okay. Um, definitely check it out, though. It's I great. Matt Damon. Mm-hmm. Drew Barrymore. Yeah. Bill Pullman. That's right. One of my favorite Bill Pullman performances in this movie, honestly, mm-hmm. as Corso. Great character. A um, little Lone Star in there. A little bit of Lone Star. <laughs> it's kind of an older, weary lo- Lone Star. Um, the alien designs are great in this. Oh yeah. All the all the voice cast, the uh, like you're mentioning the the, blend the, animation of the animation is just so cool in the way that they the way the characters move because you'll right. have like a kangaroo alien yeah. lady uh-huh. and the way that she moves is uh-huh. very different from the way that like the horseman moves. Right. And they all have sure. like different like yeah. mannerisms that make them totally. visually interesting. Definitely. So it's a great movie. It's great. It's tons of fun. If you're a fan of sci-fi, mm-hmm. must see. For sure. Must see film. Yeah. Um, so check it out. Check out Titan AE. It's very cool. Came out back in the year 2000. That's right. Um, all right. What do you have at your next spot? All right. My number three mm-hmm. is Joe versus the Volcano. Mm, I had this down on my list. Joe versus the Volcano. got to delete it. I love it. You stole it from me. It's excellent. It's one of the best Tom Hanks movies. It's probably my favorite Tom Hanks movie. Is it really? Um, wow. It's It's definitely up there. Okay. This movie, it's a classic. It, it has so much heart yep. and creativity, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's such a bizarre kind of wacky adventure, but it's really just a story about life and, and valuing your life, because mm. really, he thinks he's going to die, he thinks he's about to die. And he's told to go throw himself into this volcano to save these village people. Right. And for money, he's doing it for money. For money, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a great movie, yeah. Joe vs. the Volcano. Mm-hmm. It's it's definitely a hidden gem. It's a quirky film. Yeah. The 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 visual style of that mm-hmm. movie is just bizarre, but it totally is. works yeah. for sure. And I love how it starts off so. Bland and gray and boring. Oh, yeah. And as it goes on, it gets way more colorful and mm-hmm. exciting and fun. It totally reflects the character's journey. Definitely. Um, man, this is great. This is a great, great film. Tom Hanks, Meg Ryan, mm-hmm. who, of course, teamed up on several other films. Of which is in Seattle and mm-hmm. You've Got Mail. This is their best collaboration. Yeah. In my opinion. It's so good. She's playing three different roles, That's right. first of all. Yeah, yeah. And he has such a great arc. The music, the everything about this mm-hmm. is just mm-hmm. stupendous. Um, so yeah, I'm a big, big fan of this movie, and I'm very glad it made your final yeah. cut. It's got a lot of character, definitely. Okay, moving what your, on. What is your number three? To another favorite actor of ours. Okay, Jim Carrey. I think you have my exact pick in this in this art. in the same spot. I think Are so. Number three. Uh, I think number this is, four this is my four. I think I think it's the same one. The Majestic. The Majestic. <laughs> That's right. It's the best. It, it's excellent. It's the best Jim Carrey movie. Yeah. I'm saying it right now. Truman Show is fantastic. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. I like Liar Liar even. It's fantastic. The Mask I'm a huge fan of. Mm-hmm. So many of his movies are great, but this is by far my favorite. It's, I agree. It's a more dramatic performance. Mm-hmm. 
it's Frank Darabont who did um, Shawshank Redemption. Yep. And The Green Mile. Mm-hmm. And he's directing this kind of as a throwback to Frank Capra, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington sure. vibe is yeah. what I get from this big yeah. time. Because it's this guy who's a screenwriter in Hollywood, mm-hmm. he's trying to make it, and here comes Senator McCarthy with his blacklist and right. trying to track down the communists. Yep, yep. And he gets in this car accident, he's... Finds himself in this small yeah. town, doesn't it's know a, who he it's is. It's a very sprawling story. It's a big story. Yeah. Um, but it's very focused in its storytelling, mm-hmm. in its characters. The character interactions are great. What he goes through in this small town, they mistake him for someone else, and he starts That's to right. think he is this person. And yeah. Is he really? Is he not? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's this whole thing of he was in the war, so maybe it is really him, yeah. and yeah. maybe he forgot, and all this. It's just really interesting. I was riveted the whole time mm-hmm. watching it the mm-hmm. first time. I've watched it a couple times since. Yeah. And it always brings a tear to my eye. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it just is so enjoyable. The performances, again, the relationships, all of it. It's a, it's a great snapshot at 1950s America, too. For sure. People look back on the 50s very fondly. There's a lot of great things about the 50s, but there's a lot of bad things, too. For sure. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Can't forget. Yeah. The good every, with the bad. Every, every era is not without its problems. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Yeah, it's so, an excellent pick. Had to um, pick it. Uh, that's what made my number three slot. Very cool. Very cool. You took my number four. Okay. So my number four now is Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, <laughs> okay. which you just referenced. <laughs> yeah. Um, Great. This is basically the It's a Wonderful Life of Fourth of July. Oh, it's yeah, kind of sure. the must yeah. see um, Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy Stewart yeah. movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very wholesome. Yeah. Um, just about. This nice guy who's just a straight-laced American man. Young, he's naive. Who's young, and he's thrust into the political turmoil of Washington. The corruption. Yeah. All of it. Even back in the 30s, which mm -hmm. people like, again, people look back fondly on, like, all these, oh, America used to be so great. (laughs) Again, there have always been problems. That's right. That's right. Even back then, they were, like, going after, like, these corrupt politicians. We need to keep an eye on them. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now, of course, it's far worse. But yeah, yeah. this is a great film. It we is. watch it every it year. Is. Yeah, for Fourth yeah. of July. It's a Frank Capra movie. Yeah, um, I'm surprised how many people haven't seen this. I yeah. don't know why this isn't a household name. Right. Um, in the same way that like it's Wonderful Life is. Sure. Uh, it's it's fantastic. I love Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. It's a great pick. It's one that uh, again we've we've watched so many times, and. Uh, it's one that we'll continue to watch because it's so enjoyable. <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, all right, moving on to my next pick. It's going to be Lonely Are the Brave. Okay, very cool. <laughs> this is another one I haven't seen. This is a movie that, again, I hadn't really heard of until fairly recently, but it's another one where it's an actor I really like, Kirk Douglas. Okay, yep. Huge fan of Kirk Douglas. And cool. um, as I was researching this movie, I found out. It's his favorite movie he was ever part of. Oh, really? I was like, really? That's funny. Never even heard of it. Why? Why does he like this one so much? <laughs> Why does he think back on this one so fondly? Right. So I bought it. Kino Lorber, again, had a great Blu-ray edition. Very cool. Man, this movie's great. This movie, it was honestly hard to pick. This one and, and Will Penny were both kind of vying for that top spot because they're similar in that Lonely of the Brave. It's a Western, but it's set when it was shot, which is in the 60s. Okay. So he's a cowboy, mm-hmm. but it's not like the Wild West. It's not the Wild West. There's like you know, people are. It's it's not There's the cars. same. It's not the same as it was. Right. You know, it's like it's one of those movies where it's like they're taking my what I want, mm-hmm. you know, from me. Mm-hmm. You know, my my lifestyle right. is being right. encroached upon. Because yeah, there's cars. That's, that and sounds a lot helicopters like helicopters right. and all this. That sounds so, a lot like kind of the plot of Red Dead Redemption too. Oh, interesting. That movie takes okay. place, in, or that game, right. takes place in 1899, at the turn of the century. Uh, right, right. And that kind of outlaw western cowboys have been pushed out of sure. civilization. Uh-huh. So, yeah, that sounds, a re- that sounds really cool. Yeah, I'll it's great. I'll definitely have to check that one out. It's great, because you start the movie off, he's on a horse, you mm-hmm. know, he's it's out in the west, in the desert. It's all black and white, too. So okay. it has that real classic feel. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you're... And he looks up and there's a helicopter. You're like, oh wait, this isn't a western. Oh, That's what's great. going on? That's but it is cool. because there's still like he goes to the the bar. It's very like the cool. saloon, and you know there's a bar fight, and there it's like has all the kind of western tropes, mm-hmm. but in a modernized, unique 
setting and, and way. Mm. It's just fascinating movie. Super well made. His really performance neat. is fantastic. Awesome. Um, so I, I had to had to mention that one. It's kind of uh, one of those must see if you're a Kirk Douglas fan for sure. Good. I'm getting some good recommendations here. Right? Yeah. A lot of these I have not seen. Yeah, for sure. All right. What do you have next? Next, I have uh, a favorite of ours that we've discovered recently. The Hudsucker Proxy. Damn. You took my... The Hudsucker Proxy. Two away from picking. Come on. <laughs> the Hudsucker Proxy, to me, um, is the best movie Sam Raimi never made. Even though he kind of did make it. Right. He's second unit directed. Uh-huh. Uh, but it's a... Co-wrote um, it, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a Coen Brothers movie. Right. That is essentially about a guy who invents the hula hoop. But really, right. it's about a lot more than that. Yeah. Um, you didn't even find that out until almost the end of the movie. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's hilarious. Yeah, it's very funny. It, it has a very uh, large, like, production. Mm. The scope and mm-hmm. scale of everything right. is very, like, snappy and, and kind of like a Golden Age of Hollywood yeah. style sure. vintage movie. Yeah, it's like, it has that Frank Capra, For Mr. Sure. Smith Goes to Washington vibe. Right, right. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, we've referenced a lot of Mr. Smith goes to Washington. <laughs> yeah. Let me just tell you. Hey, Capra, he's one of the best. <laughs> um, can I say? But the Hudsucker Proxy, yeah, it's it's one of those underrated, underseen, mm-hmm. uh, a little quirky, a little weird. Yeah, but, um, oh, yeah, it's very offbeat, kind of in its yeah. sensibilities and its humor. But while I'm watching it the whole time, I'm just thinking, this is Metropolis. This is a great Superman movie. Oh yeah, and it basically yeah. is. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, Jennifer Jason Leigh is a very proto. Lois Lane, oh, yeah, character for sure. And there's a guy who's you know kind of Perry White, mm-hmm. the whole newsroom, mm-hmm. yeah, stuff, yeah. all that stuff. Very much reminds me mm-hmm. of classic Superman. Yeah, both uh, both Hudsucker and the Majestic both have great uh, Joseph Campbell cameos, or not not Joseph Campbell. I'm talking about <laughs> Bruce, Campbell. Bruce Campbell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bruce Campbell cameos. Yes, you're right. He, you're in, right. In the Majestic, yep. he's the swashbuckling hero That's in the right. movie. <laughs> yes. And here he's like the news reporter cartoonist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's good. Yeah, definitely check out Hudsucker Proxy. It's very good. Yeah, it is great. It's one of our favorite uh, Coen Brothers movies that just does not get the recognition as it mm. deserves at all. I don't know what happened with the release. If it was released at a bad time, it had a lot of competition, didn't do very well, and it's still even on most people. You know, do these top five, top ten lists of Coen Brothers movies. It's usually not there. And it may, might be because it is a little offbeat, it is a little strange in its kind of um, setting and plot and everything, but yeah, we're huge fans. We're sure. huge fans of that movie. Cool. All right, so that was your number five. My number five pick is Howard Hawks, Only Angels Have Wings. Mm-hmm. Have you seen this? Have I, I, think, this I think I have seen this, yes. This is another film that he made. This is he, a classic. He did so many great movies. Mm-hmm. He did Bring a Baby. Yep. Um, he, he's kind of played in every genre. Sure. You know, he did Red River. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a movie where he's got uh, one of his staple leading men, Cary Grant. That's right. He's also got Gene Arthur, who is a fantastic okay. actress. And it's about these extremely dangerous missions that they go on in South America. <laughs> in South America, delivering goods mm-hmm. up in the mountains. Right. Where it's foggy, you don't really can't really see where you're going. There's all these dangerous, you know, cliffs and trees and all this madness. Sure. So they're basically like daredevil pilots, mm-hmm. okay? And it's a great romantic adventure story. It's a really a romance between Cary Grant mm-hmm. and Gene Arthur. Yep. Uh, but there's some fantastic effects. I mean, effects that back in 1939 were revolutionary mm-hmm. for the the aerial stunts that they were doing. Um, the, the use of miniatures and models and things like that are yeah. really incredible. Mm-hmm. So I'm a big, big fan of this movie. I just really like the dialogue. I like the characters. It's exciting. It's fun. It's an easy watch. Great. Uh, it's when was one this, of those, do you know when this was released? 1939. Wow. So okay. this is an oldie. Old, way, oldie but a goodie. Way back. Um, That's but great. Yeah, yeah, I had to make I the can, list. I can attest. Only Angels Have Wings is very good. Yeah, it's one I've watched multiple times mm-hmm. and I've always enjoyed. So. For sure. That's it. That's my top five. Now we're going on to our next five. We're doing a list of ten. Have I done my five yet? No, you just did your five. Hudsucker Proxy. Oh, that was five? That was five. Now you got to do six. Oh, okay. You're right. You're right. I was looking at my list, and because you had Majestic, it kind of threw me you off a little bit. It. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready. Go for it. What do you have? My next movie is Pig. Oh, yeah. Nicolas Cage's Pig. Was that on your list? It wasn't. That's a good thought, okay. though. I love Pig. Yeah. 
I discovered this movie um, during the Christmas time. Mm. So it's kind of become a Christmas classic for me, even though it has nothing to do with the holiday. <laughs> um, right. It is a Nicolas Cage movie yeah. about a truffle pig farmer mm-hmm. who has this, he has a pet pig that goes out in the woods and finds truffles. Right. And he sells them. Right. And somebody kidnaps his pig. Uh-oh. And he has to go out and find his pig. And it's really a story about him and and us discovering his past life yeah. and the life that he left behind and no why, why he's now a farmer. Right. All just through character interactions right. and the context of the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a great, great movie. It's very it's, well done. It's one of those movies I actually like was sobbing yeah. by the time it was over just because it's such a such an emotional journey yeah. that you go yeah. on. Right. Where kind of like when you realize what the pig really represents mm-hmm. to him and mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. what uh, his leaving this life really was, mm-hmm. it's just very good. It's kind yeah. of like, it's been described before as John Wick, but instead of with action, with yeah. sympathy <laughs> right. for people. Yeah, sure. <laughs> that's pretty sure. cool. Sure, yeah, that's yeah. very cool. It's very well directed, very well written, and it, it might be the best Nick Cage performance of all time. It's up there. It's definitely up there. It's it's a great film. Yeah. I'm glad I watched it. Mm-hmm. Very impactful. For sure. Um, Strong I, movie. I haven't rewatched it because it's kind of one of those that you know it's kind of hard to watch. <laughs> it is sure. It's it a is, heavy movie. It's heavy. Yeah. Um, but great pick. Great pick. I know you're a big Nick Cage fan. I'm glad uh, glad he made it in there. Yes. All okay. right. Not the last time you'll see him on my list. Oh yeah. yeah that's good. <laughs> Another hidden gem. Okay. Because this film unfortunately is only available in two ways. You either have to have Apple TV Plus, oh. or you have to have bought the Blu-ray box set. Mm, I know what you're talking about now. Wolf Walkers. Wolf Walkers. Wolf Walkers is a masterpiece. It is. 100% masterpiece. This is Cartoon Saloon. Mm-hmm. This was just released in 2020. Yep. So this is the most recent film on my list yep. by far. It was cursed yeah. with the Apple TV Plus release. Mm-hmm. Apple TV Plus is a death sentence it for is. any movie. <laughs> you put it on Apple TV Plus, I guarantee you no one will watch it. No one's going to watch it. No one subscribes. Yep. Unfortunately. Only only a few people's dads um, have Apple TV right. Plus. And they don't want to watch Wolf Walkers. Right. This is a great story. It's you know, it's Cartoon Saloon, their Irish animation studio. Yep. They adapt a lot of Irish folklore that did Secret of Kells. I nearly had Secret of Kells and Song of the Sea also. Oh, are both of excellent. The sea. Nearly yeah. had those on my list. And I'm this, glad to see Wolf Walkers. Yeah, this rounds out the uh, Irish folklore trilogy mm-hmm. that they created, which you can get the box set I have. And they've here. done more stuff than, than just that trilogy as oh, well. Sure. They've done My Father's um, Dragon. My Father's Dragon, very that good. That was almost on my list. And as an well. episode of Star Wars Visions. That's right. That's right. Screechers Reach. That's right. One of my favorites. Very good. Great, great studio, great storytellers, incredibly beautiful hand-drawn animation yeah it's like a storybook come to life yeah it, it is really stunning and wolf walkers is about a girl and her father who moved to this town and they're wolf hunters mm-hmm. and she ends up meeting a young girl in the woods that's right who she discovers can turn into a wolf not and exactly so, a werewolf but right no no no. yeah yeah um but man what a great story the way it goes um, and the animation again, that the cast is great. The music, mm-hmm. the music in this is just fantastic. Yeah. It's one I've only been able to see once. Yeah, yeah. I'm but, glad uh, I own it now. So yeah. I can watch it whenever yeah, I want. For sure. I want to watch it for again. Sure. Wolf um, Walkers is a great pick. But it's it's just a stunning movie to look at. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on top of that, the story is very compelling and interesting. It gets kind of intense sure. in moments too. Yeah. So had to put that on the list because it might be my favorite of the trilogy. I don't mm-hmm. know. I, I need to rewatch all of them, but this one stands out in my mind the most yeah. of all of them. Yeah. Great pick. All right, what do you have next? Next up for me is Streets of Fire. Oh, the, yeah. <laughs> the Streets of Fire. This is a 80s meets 50s action <laughs> road movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, like a roadster That's movie. That's a good way to describe it. Um, it's kind of a musical but sure, sure. the only musical sequences are like a music video, basically. Um, so it's essentially uh, a prince. Your princess is in another castle plot. Right, right. Where this lady, who's a popular singer and brings all the cool kids mm-hmm, out into mm-hmm. the town, yep. um, gets kidnapped by Willem Dafoe, very young Willem Dafoe. Yeah, one of his best um, villain roles. He looks very creepy. He's great. It looked very goblin esque. Yeah. Uh, this is long before I did Goblin, though. Right, right. And 
so we need to call Tom Cody, who's mm. this old time drifter. Yep. Um, we need to call him to come get her, get the girl back. <laughs> right. It's his ex girlfriend, right. and there's all this drama. Yep. And Rick Moranis is in it. Mm. He's like this nerdy it's dork. Great in that. Um, it's it's very cool. Streets it of is. Fire. Streets of Fire has a really interesting like grasp mm-hmm. on you yeah. because it, it really grabs you when it starts. Right. Because the music is there and the yeah. visuals are amazing yeah. and you're totally into it. Yep. And it has a spectacular ending. Oh yeah. It ends with this awesome like fight in the street mm-hmm. and another epic musical right. conclusion. Yep. Um, but again, when I say musical, it's not like they're singing and dancing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's because there's a main character who is a singer. Right. Exactly. <laughs> That's and, an and her, and her performances yes, are what you're watching. Exactly. Um, it's like a concert movie. So yeah, it's kind of like a concert you know? uh, ensemble cast right. adventure. Yeah. Um, it's it's classified as a rock and roll fable. That's right. Which That's is right. Yeah. probably the most apt description. Walter Hill. Walter Hill is such a great filmmaker. Yeah. I've enjoyed so many of his movies, mm-hmm. and it's it might be his. Best movie, honestly. It's way up there. It's definitely up there. He's a, he's a great filmmaker. That's a movie I've enjoyed a couple times. You've got the 4K mm-hmm. Blu-ray, I think. Mm-hmm. I, need I, to, I need to pick that up. Yeah. Excellent choice. Excellent choice, I've got mm-hmm. to say. Um, definitely underrated, underseen film. All right. Well, we're going to move on to my next pick, which is going to be the high school comedy Christmas zombie musical. Oh boy. Anna and the Apocalypse. Anna and the Apocalypse. What a great movie. Yeah. I've seen it every year since it came out. <laughs> of course. Um, it, it's a tradition now because mm-hmm. this movie is just so quirky and weird and wild and fun and funny and dramatic. Yeah. And yeah. romantic. <laughs> and it's, a, it's got everything. It's got everything you could want. It is. Very cool. Um very so unique. If you wanna, if you wanna get away from all the sentimentality around the holidays, mm-hmm. and you wanna throw on something wacky and weird and different, yeah, throw on Anna and the Apocalypse. Sure, sure. Because you're still gonna get the heart. Mm-hmm. You're still mm-hmm. gonna get the fun music, the lights and the Christmas the lights, the candy canes, decorations. You know, but they're using the candy canes to fight zombies. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the difference. Yeah, there. yeah. It has. It definitely has a tongue-in-cheek sense of humor. Yes, it's yes. very self-aware of itself. Right. Uh, but it, you're right, it's great. It has a good heart. Oh, yeah. Uh, it has a really cool arc for everybody. So, yeah, and in the Apocalypse. Great characters. It's a, it's a great, great pick. It's so much fun. Ella Hunt was just in Horizon mm-hmm. with Kevin Costner. That's right. And uh, so I can't wait to see her in more. But she's the, the lead actress in for this. For sure. Yeah. That's where I first saw her. And uh, the whole cast of young young actors is, is excellent. Yeah, they do a great job. Um, they all do a really good job. <laughs> the writing, the songwriting is mm-hmm. very quirky mm-hmm. and funny. And... Uh, yeah, man, I'm thinking of all the songs right now. <laughs> Super good. Break yeah. out into song right uh-huh, now. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, it's again, it's a tradition now because it's so fun to watch. It's yeah. just easy and fun to watch this movie for sure about good high school kids fighting zombies during the holidays. During Christmas, that's right. That's great. Right. Great pick. All right, what do you have next? Next for me is it could happen to you. Mm. Some, of, I mean, a lot of people may have seen this. Another Nick Cage. But this is classic. another one, another Nick Cage classic that um, I had never heard of for the longest time. Yeah, I, this is I, not I'm, one of his most popular. No, I don't. I don't hear many people talk about it. No. So, a cop who went in a diner one time mm-hmm. and couldn't leave enough money for a tip right. for the waitress. Yep. So he promised her, "If I win the lottery, I'll give you half the winnings." Right. And she's like, "Yeah, okay, whatever." And then as it happens, the next night, he wins the lottery. Yeah. Comes back the next day and gives her half the winnings. It is. So, really, it's it's kind of a, a smultzy, uh, uh, just like romantic comedy, yeah, sure. um, uh, just like movie with a big heart. Yes. Just yes. about being kind to your neighbor mm-hmm. and about how money kind of ruins people's mm-hmm. lives sometimes. Yeah, true. Um, yeah, really, just a movie about these people who win the lottery and their, their lives are how it changes their lives mm. in different ways, right. for better or worse. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Nicolas Cage gives a great performance here. He's very, he's very Superman-esque. <laughs> where he's Clark Kent, he's very Clark Kenty. Right, right. Yeah, he's kind to people, yeah. and he's the, the neighborhood likes him a lot. Yep. He's a very like stand-up guy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's excellent. It's excellent. This movie, it always lifts my spirits. It always mm-hmm. kind of gets me happy. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, yeah, that's a classic for me. It's a great one. Um, yeah, I'm glad you told me about it because it was one that I uh, definitely enjoyed. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, would like to watch again because I've only seen it the one time. But um, yeah, Nick Cage, man, you can't really go wrong with that guy. He's always going to give it. He always gives one hundred and ten percent. That's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun movie. Fun movie. Very enjoyable mm-hmm. film to watch. For sure. Um, all right, great pick. Now we're going to jump down to my next pick, right. which is the Australian western, The Proposition. Okay. Australian Western, huh? It's set in the Old West, 1800s. Okay. In Australia. But it's all in Australia. And it was shot in Australia. Features a mostly Australian cast. <laughs> the great Guy Pearce. This just sounds like Mad Max. <laughs> yeah, basically. But it's in the past, not in the future. Mm-hmm. Guy Pearce, Ray Winstone, Danny Houston, um, John Hurt. Okay. Uh, Emily Watson, uh, David Winham. Great cast. The whole cast is just phenomenal. Very cool. They're all, they're all great. Sweet. It's a brutal film. Very intense. Yeah. Very much, uh, you know, what life was like mm, mm-hmm. in the outback, you know, in that time. I mean, it wasn't an easy, easy life. No. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not easy to live in the outback now. That's right. That's right. Um, directed by John Hillcoat. Okay. You know the You know the name? No, just, I don't, you I just don't know rec- the name. You just recently saw a film he did. I did. What? What, what is it? What the did he road. do? The Road. The Road. Yeah. Now that's good. This is what he did right before he did The Road. Okay. This Very came cool. out in 2005. Hmm. Man. It that is, sounds good. It is great. It's a, it's a, it's a movie about brothers. I love it. Um, so brotherhood is a major theme. Justice is a major theme. Uh... Man, it, it's, it's so it sounds really like Ninja well Turtles meets Mad Max. Kind of is. That's a great way to describe it. Great way to describe it. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, awesome. It's got a slew of just excellent performances. Um, like I said, just some hard hitting action, um, and then just these incredible shots of yeah. the mm-hmm. desert wasteland that is Australia, <laughs> the outback of Australia. Yeah, awesome. Very um, cool. Must see pick. a must see western. A mm-hmm. western that just goes unrecognized to this day yeah it's funny letterbox just interviewed guy pierce okay and they wanted his top four hmm and he gave his top four and they and he, they said uh uh i forget somehow it came up what are some of your favorite movies that right. you've been in that you've been he in said, yeah. he said proposition number one easy yeah, yeah. that was his, right off the bat that's his, really cool his answer so it's great another one that the actor involved enjoyed mm-hmm. it and uh got a lot out of it i got a lot out of it it's in my collection. Okay, great. So Definitely check it out. What's it called again? It. The Proposition. The Proposition. Yep. The Proposition. There okay. All right, what do you got next, Carson? Next for me is Hayao Miyazaki's directorial debut. Oh, going way back. This is Lupin the Third, The Castle Cagliostro. <laughs> what um, a title. Yeah, excellent title. <laughs> this is a Japanese animated movie, um, although the English dub is very good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, it is, actually. As, as are most Studio Ghibli movies. Although, this right. was before Ghibli was established. Sure. It's just Miyazaki's first directorial movie. Mm-hmm. Lupin III is kind of like a Japanese James Bond, in a way. Mm. Yeah. But he's a more yeah. he's a more humorous character. Right, right. Um, and this is just about uh, him, who's kind of this, like, spy, secret agent, freelance con man. Yeah. yeah. Who uh, has to rescue this princess from this right. castle. So it kind of combines like uh, 50s, 60s uh, spy adventure mm-hmm, sure, yeah. and like medieval fantasy. Right. So it's right, like a clash right. between yeah. those two worlds. Really interesting. In a really cool way. Uh, there's an awesome ensemble team mm. that Lupin has. Mm-hmm. It's like he's got his buddy. It's like, you know, they're, they're like the Blues Brothers. They look right. like the Blues Brothers. Yeah, yeah. And then he's got this samurai who's just a samurai. Right. And he's with yeah. them the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. And you have this princess and she does like magic stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's really cool. It's really it cool. The it Castle is. Cagliostro, full of adventure, great animation. Yeah. Um, there's there's just a, it's really, it's really underrated in terms mm-hmm. of, it's underexposed. Not many people yeah. have heard about it. True. But yeah, Miyazaki is such a big, he just won an Oscar this last year. Yeah, that's the thing is Miyazaki is so big and Studio Ghibli has become so big yeah. that people don't go back mm-hmm. and watch the older ones. Right, right. Like this and Nausicaa, Nausicaa which is my of course. favorite. Yeah, it's a great pick. Um, are, are both really well made. They're, mm-hmm. they're a little rougher, you know, around the edges, sure. I guess you could yeah. say. But, yeah. but that's um, kind of what this is about. This is right, kind of, it fits. I, yeah, yeah. yeah it fits it's a messier story. character, a messier uh-huh, story. Uh-huh, so. Exactly. 
definitely works. Great choice. Great choice. All right. Um, man, uh, I got to make sure that I have... I've always got to have a samurai movie. Sure. Because I'm a samurai yeah. fanatic. Yeah. So I think I'm going to go with... Man, I'm debating between two movies. Because I have both of these on my list. I don't know which one I want to discuss. I think I'll go with I'll go with The Great Akira Kurosawa. Of course. You just talked about Hayao Miyazaki. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go to another Japanese filmmaker who's a master of the art form. Yeah. And that's Akira Kurosawa. His most unknown, underrated movie, to me, is Throne of Blood. Mm. I think that's, Throne that's of Blood... That's probably my favorite of his. Is it really? I love Throne of Blood. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. It's up there for me, too. Yeah. Um, I don't think it surpassed The Seven Samurai quite, but mm-hmm. it's a great movie. It's very atmospheric. It's for sure. A, it's a haunting film. Mm-hmm. It's basically a horror movie. Yeah. I consider it a horror movie. Yeah. Very scary. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a samurai horror film. Mm-hmm. It's, it's Kurosawa's take on Macbeth. Yeah. So if you take Shakespeare's Macbeth and mm-hmm. you set it in feudal Japan, mm-hmm. this is what you get. And it is just fascinating. It's beautiful to look at. Right. Like I said, very atmospheric, very foggy. It's all black and white. Um, the 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 just kind of puts you on the edge of your seat the whole way through, mm-hmm. and the performances are fantastic. Uh, Toshiro Mifune yep. plays the lead role. He works with Kurosawa in many of his films, and it's one of his best performances. It's just a desperate kind of wild performance. That's right. And so many images in this movie stick out in my head. For sure, you know, yeah. some some just stunning imagery. It is um, beautiful, the haunting only, music as yeah. well. The only thing to me that they should change about it is the title, because its its original title is maybe the coolest title I've ever heard of: "A Spider Web Castle." A Spider's Web <laughs> Castle, awesome That's title. So good. Throne of Blood is a cool title. Throne but of Blood is very cool. Spider's Web Castle, yeah, is yeah. an ultimate title. It is. It's yeah. a great title. Uh, All right, what do you got next? Next for me is a boy named Charlie Brown. Everyone's heard of Charlie Brown. What are you thinking about? The Peanuts movie? Everyone's heard about that. Everyone's heard about Charlie Brown, but not this movie. Not this Charlie Brown movie. Oh, wait a second. You're talking about the Christmas special? Not the Christmas special. Not not the Thanksgiving special. Not the Peanuts movie, which is also very good and a little underrated. It kind of is. Um, This is a boy named Charlie Brown. This is the... This is the original movie. Just original... Charlie Brown movie. It's just based on the comic strip. It was like 1960-something. Yeah, right? I want to say it was the... 68 or 67? 50, 59. Or 59? 69, oh, sorry. 69, okay. 69. Wow. Um, this is one of my favorite patriotic movies. Yeah. Because it's, it's another very... another 4th of July pick, yeah. It's very, um, <laughs> just a boy in America. Mm-hmm. And he loves America because America gives him all these things that he loves. He can kick the football. He can... Play baseball. Baseball is really the central yeah. theme around all of it. Right. Um, but yeah, it's just a great kind of journey through the world of peanuts mm-hmm. in the most classic way it could be done. Right. So yeah, yeah. Without any kind of like holiday theming, right. it's just the, it's just Charlie Brown and his friends. Yep. And they're basically playing a baseball game. Yeah. And they wanted like. The, he's on the team or she's on the team or whatever and he goes right. around town so yeah it's just a great classic kind of compilation of a lot of the old comic strips mm. into a cohesive story yeah it does feel like one complete story yeah it's not like a series of shorts no, or anything no, like that no it's, it's one it one big movie one whole thing yeah that is uh really compelling and fun and mm-hmm. funny it's I mean, people think Charlie Brown I think they instantly think of the Christmas special but just because that's been around for so long and yeah it shows on TV every year and all that. Mm-hmm. But this is really, if you just, you know, take again, taking the holidays out of it, like you right, said, right. this is the Charlie Brown story. For sure. So right. it's a great choice. Great choice. Yeah, yeah. like it a lot. Definitely. Good movie. Um, all righty. Well. How many do we have left? Um, well, that was our 10. I think we should go to 20. Can you do 20? I mean, I can do 20. I think we should do 20. We've already gone through 10 that fast. <laughs> So, that was so fast. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. That's fine with me. We're going to 20, folks. Oh For boy. my number 10, I'm going to I'm gonna stay in Asia. Okay. And I'm going to go with The Good, The Bad, The Weird. That was one on my <laughs> list. Really? That's a great pick. Oh, man. Yes. The Good, The Bad, The Weird. Yes. It's 
Korea's good. take on... It's bad. <laughs> and it's weird. And it's weird. It's all three of those. It things. is. And so it's kind of a... It's hilarious. It's not. I wouldn't call it a spoof of Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. But it's, it kind it's of verging is. on it being kind of is. Because it's still really cool. It's, and has a lot of cool action. It's, it's like a hyper version of that. It's like, yeah, it's like crank it up to 11. Yeah. Um, there's there's cowboys swinging on ropes, spinning <laughs> shotguns, and right. shooting each other. Right, exactly. It's pretty awesome. It's crazy. Yeah. The action in it is fantastic. Mm-hmm. The characters are so well-defined and so archetypal. Sure. And yet have their little quirks to them. Uh, it's, it's full of humor. It's so funny. Yeah. It's so funny. Um, it's a great, it really is a great comedy. And, um, but like you're saying, has son- tons of style. The visual style is great. Mm-hmm. The music. Yeah. Um, again, performances are excellent. Right. It's all, you know, set in Asia during the Old West, mm-hmm. but it's not the American West. It's, it's, you know, um, and it's just, it's its own thing. It's mm-hmm. very unique. Yeah. There's nothing you can really compare it to. Yeah. Uh, for sure. It's not like a typical spoof. It's not like a typical comedy. Like I'm saying, it has genuinely great action sequences in it, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's just a very different type of movie. And one that I think is well worth watching for Western fans. Yeah. And for fans of anime. Mm-hmm. Uh, fans of you know Eastern cinema, all of that. It's it's gonna you're gonna get something out yeah, of it. Yeah, it's definitely it's it. definitely East meets West kind yeah, of exactly, awesome action. Exactly. So very well made movie. Um, Great pick. Look at the, had the to, weird. Had to put on there. It's on Blu-ray. I own it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it had to had to make the list. So there it is. Great one. All right. What do you got next? Next Number for 11. next for me is Welcome to Collinwood. Oh yes. This is a Joe and Anthony Russo movie. The Russo Brothers. The Russo Brothers. Avengers Endgame, Avengers Infinity War. In my opinion. Captain America Civil War, opinion, Captain is, America the Winter Soldier. This is better than all of those movies, in my eyes. Kind of is. It, it, it really is. <laughs> this is a heist movie. Yeah. And it's the messiest, um, sloppiest, most everything that could go wrong will go wrong yes. heist you've ever seen. It's basically the opposite of Ocean's Eleven. Sure. But it's got George Clooney in it. It's got, it's got George Clooney. <laughs> that's right. That's the only thing yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the same. Yeah, Sam Rockwell oh, is Rockwell awesome in this. Is the, the whole cast is, is... They all bring really interesting mm-hmm. flavors of characters mm-hmm. yep. to this, like, that crack team where we yeah, need yeah, the yeah. guy who's good at this uh, and the guy who's good at uh, that. Uh, yep. Um... Yeah, it, it's super, super good. It's so uh, funny, yeah. and yeah, like I said, it's just that that deconstruction of that genre yeah. of like usually we lay out the plan, yeah, right, and then it it goes perfectly, and one thing will go wrong, and it'll be intense, you know. Yeah, yeah. but this is like the plans out the window. They <laughs> like instantly, and we all have to improvise, and everything yes. starts going worse and worse. Absolutely. So yeah. Welcome to Conwood. Yeah. Definitely well worth the watch. Totally agree. Um, Especially for any uh, Joe and Anthony Russo fans. Yes. Because they became... See where they came from. They became massive. Yeah. And then they did Gray Man. <laughs> yeah. So... Less said about Gray Man, the better. Yeah. Um, but Welcome to Conwood. Check welcome it out. Welcome to Conwood. Easily their best film. Sure. I totally agree. Yeah. Um, all right. We're going to move on now to my number 11 pick. I'm going to take... Hidalgo. 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 Okay. Good I feel one. like Hidalgo came and went. Mm-hmm. And people don't talk about it anymore. Sure. It's a, first of all, a true story about okay. uh, Frank T. Hopkins, mm. mm-hmm. um, who was part of Buffalo Bill's Wild West show back okay. in the 1890s. Yeah. And uh, he gets this opportunity to run in the Ocean of Fire, which is a race uh, across the desert. In the Middle East. Very cool. So it's a pretty unique movie. It's another one of these where it's kind of like fish out of water story. Sure. Um, but it's it's also about him dealing with his past. There's these intense flashbacks throughout it about you know the kind of life that he led um, before he was in the show mm-hmm. and the kind of trauma that he deals with. Um, but it's also uh, has some just insane great action sequences yeah. in it. Yeah. Um, I don't know who said it, but a horse at full gallop is the most cinematic image, mm-hmm. uh, and that's permeates this movie. It's definitely true. Yeah. So it's just a really great kind of epic biographical western 
mm. set in the Middle East, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. It's another one of those weird kind of amalgamation of things. Yeah, yeah. Joe Johnston, though. Mm. We're, we're huge fans. Of course. Joe Johnston. I mean, he, he's, he can do no wrong. He's one of the best directors of all time. Yeah, yeah. He genuinely is. The Rocketeer, Captain America, the first Avenger, yep. Jumanji. Mm-hmm. Uh, so many great movies that he, he directed over his yeah, career. Fantastic. And this is, to me, this is one of the best. I would put this up there with Jumanji, Cap, Rocketeer, sure. all those. Yeah. I would put it right up there. Um, Vigo, Mor- Vigo Mortensen. That's right. Coming right off uh, Lord of the Rings. That's right. Uh, as Aragorn. Yeah. And he's playing a totally different character here. Mm-hmm. But just a great performance. Great supporting cast, too. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that had to, had to be in there somewhere. Excellent. And that's where, it, that's where it ended up. Very good pick. Uh, next for me is uh, probably my favorite Val Kilmer performance. We've talked about this during our spoof movies. This is Top Secret. Yes. Top Secret. Yes. Um, what even is Top Secret? <laughs> it's hard to explain. It's, it's a- kind of a spoof <laughs> of Elvis movies. And spy movies. And spy movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It combines those things. Because These are the guys that did the airplane movies. Yes. Yeah. You know, the Naked Gun. Mm-hmm. And They're to me, kind of to like, me, this this tops all of them in terms of humor. Top Secret is at the top. Yeah. Or no doubt yeah. about it. Yeah. Uh, Val Kilmer. It's no plays secret. This, at the top. He plays this like yeah exactly. <laughs> he plays this like it kind of uh, is a secret because it's a it's a hidden gem. Right? People don't talk about. That's it. right. That's right. <laughs> He's like a famous musician. We're declassifying the top secret <laughs> files of Top Secret. That's right. right here on That's the right. Air. Sorry, anyways, yes. He's, he's, a, he's, he's a, a musician. musician. <laughs> he's a famous musician, and he gets thrust into the spy yes, plot yes, yes. unexpectedly. That's right. Kind of like Three Amigos a little bit. Very Three um, Amigos. He yes. doesn't really, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, whatever. Sure, and he's sure. just thrust into it. Right. And there's just so many great visual gags. Mm. This movie is full wall-to-wall with, with jokes. And 100%. I know a little German. He's sitting right over there. <laughs> um, Wait, he waves. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, Top Secret's awesome. I definitely recommend it. Uh, probably, like I said, probably my favorite Val Kilmer movie. It might be mine too. It's literally it's one of those comedies where every joke lands for me. Sure, I, I get a laugh out of every gag. Yeah, the visual gag with the phone, like uh, all of it, just mm-hmm. is spot on. You kind of it have to have you kind of have to have an eye for movies to really get it. Helps most if of the you jokes. know how movies are made. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of made for movie fans. Right, right. Um, because not only they're referencing all the Elvis movies and the spy movies, mm-hmm. but they're also referencing like how movies are made and how and shots are set up. Yeah. And, yeah, 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 yeah. All that. So it's it, very cool. It's great. All right. Um, Skeet Surfing. Skeet Surfing USA. Don't forget uh, the great hit. Skeet Surfing USA. Everybody <laughs> got a 12 gauge. <laughs> and their surfboard too. That's right. Um, great film. Let's go ahead and shift gears completely. Okay. And go with an uber serious World War II film mm. called Army of Shadows. Okay. Army of Shadows is a French film mm-hmm. made in 1969. Okay. By the great Jean Pierre Melville. Nice. Who did Les Samurai, so many other great Mm -hmm. French films from the Mm -hmm. 60s, the French New Wave movement. He did this film, Army of Shadows, which is a hyper realistic, authentic look at the French resistance during World War II. Mm -hmm. And what these guys did, and what these guys went through, I mean, talk about harrowing. Yeah. I mean, these guys, I mean, it's so. It's one of the most nerve wracking movies I've ever seen. Mm hmm. Uh, it's intense, but it's not. It's not because a lot of s- stuff is happening. It's not. It's not a battle movie. There's not. It's not right. battles. Sure. These guys are all spies. It's all subterfuge. It's all espionage. It's all like we captured this German. We've got to get information out of him. What are we gonna do? Uh, you know, it's stuff like that. It, it's really um, just kind of crazy to to see. You know, mm-hmm. on film. Yeah. Uh, through a, a fictional narrative, and it's loosely based on true accounts of a guy's life of what sure. he did yeah. at the time, but just super well made. Um, it's not it's not too um, brutal or graphic necessarily, but it's just very intense, edge of your seat. You know all, all these kinds of yeah. moral conundrums mm-hmm. of you know mm-hmm. what can you do during war and and you know how do we win and what cost is it going to take us to win? Are yeah. we losing ourselves? Right, right. All that kind of stuff. It's just a very frank kind of look at that time and, and what those those people did. So yeah. definitely highly recommend if you're a World War II fan, it's a must-see uh, because that whole element of the war doesn't... It gets kind of mentioned in sure. a lot of war movies. Yeah. Like the French Resistance, we're going to team up with them. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, they're coming this way or whatever. 
or there's one character who's, hey, I'm from the French Resistance and I'm here to help. Yeah. But yeah. it's like to focus on them and what they were actually doing. Right. In France at the time. Crazy. That Crazy sounds stuff. awesome. That it, sounds that sounds very cool. It's very very well um, worth a lot. I'm gonna shift gears again. Okay. Very extremely. Going from. Oh hard my core goodness. To <laughs> I'm gonna talk Rocking about Curious ship. George. <laughs> I love Curious George. <laughs> Will Ferrell right. is in Curious George is, as the man right. in the yellow hat. That's right. And it's sure. maybe my favorite Will Ferrell moment is when he's he's as as the man in the yellow hat. Yeah. Um, Curious George has an amazing soundtrack that I think a lot uh, of people know. Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson's. Uh, I got that on amazing. vinyl. Bro. Yeah, I get it on vinyl. <laughs> the yellow vinyl, it's like right. a banana. Um, Curious George. It's fantastic. It's it's about um, the beloved book character, who is a monkey from the forest that befriends a man in a yellow hat, because he thinks it's a banana. So he kind of stows away on this ship all the way back to New York City. That's right. And it's about George, whose curiosity leads him to all these misadventures. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, this movie and its story is about that. It's about George's sure. kind of origins. But it's also about finding the lost shrine of Zagawa, which is this giant yeah. uh, ruby monkey statue. Right. And we're trying to keep the local museum in business. And the museum is run by none other than Dick Van Dyke. That's right. <laughs> it's fantastic. Dick Van Dyke himself plays a very elderly museum keeper. That's right. Um, and this was 20 years ago when he shot this. That's so. right. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And this, this isn't live action, by the way. This is an animated <laughs> right. movie. Right. Um, David Cross as well is uh, in it yeah, as his son. As yeah. his son right. And he's hilarious. He's funny. Um, and Drew yeah. Barrymore. Drew Barrymore is in it. She's That's right. Fantastic yes, in yes. She's excellent. Oh, she's great. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's the most colorful movie you'll ever see. It's mm, the most mm -hmm. musical. Most colorful since Like, Dumbo. just like, just so musical and just Very nice. Very rhythmic. You know the whole the pacing, um, like the whole pacing of the movie is yep. like to the songs. Yeah, right? yeah. You feel like it just flows, it flows very well. So well, it's over before you know it, and it builds. Um, it has very a very emotional. Moment. It's gonna get emotional. Here we go. You know, get ready. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, it just it, it flows super well. It has an awesome climax. Oh yeah, and it's just a great uh, pairing. These the, this guy yep. and his monkey. Yep. This is very, very good. If you read the books when you were younger like I did, this really just brings them to life in a fun way. For sure. Yeah. Um, so it's a great film. It, it's another Does it, great... it doesn't give the pra get the praise it deserves. I agree. It, it, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Uh, DreamWorks Animation, one of their finest, for sure. That's right. Back, when they, back when they made real movies. That's right. Um, all right. I'm going to go with... Um, Oh boy, I took Curious George movie. off his list. He was going to talk about Curious George, people. <laughs> older movie. Okay. Called The Red Shoes. Ooh. Have you seen The Red Shoes yet? I, I haven't seen it yet. i got to watch this. I hear, I hear it's amazing. got the 4K. Yes. And Criterion, glor Criterion just glorious released. Glorious Technicolor. It was their first 4K release. That's right. Sure was. Criterion did. And uh, Martin Scorsese helped mm -hmm. get this uh, 4K release out because he's a massive fan of this film. Yeah. It's one of his favorite films of all time. He uh, talks a lot about how much it influences him mm -hmm. to this day. And it's a movie that is so odd. It's hard to talk about. Because the way okay. it's shot, the way it's edited, uh, the sequences here are just breathtaking. Mm. The, the visuals, the cinematography is, is amazing. But the narrative is so unique, yeah. um, the way it unfolds. But essentially what the story is, is it's about uh, this ballet dancer okay. who ultimately has to choose between this red young man... Red shoes or blue shoes. <laughs> That's right. And she chooses red shoes. <laughs> gives it's, 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 a, very, it it's, it's a very Matrix movie. <laughs> right. Um, no, she has to choose between her dancing career that she's built over years right. and this relationship, relationship she's developed with this young man. Mm. And so uh, that's what it ultimately comes down to. It's a lot about artists, what they're willing to sacrifice yep. for their art. Yep. Big theme in this film. Very cool. And uh, it's I'll just... I'll definitely check it out. It sounds awesome. Stunning. Again, yeah. visually, there's nothing like it. Yeah. From, from the era or since, honestly. I mean, really, it, it's Great. so different hmm. in the way it looks. And again, this was early days color, 1940s. Technicolor yeah. right. was a new thing. And the, mm -hmm. the way they just really use these vibrant colors in the film. It's awesome. 
it's really something. So check Very out cool. the red shoes if you haven't. Again, Criterion has a Blu-ray and a 4K. Definitely so. want to. Yeah. All right, what do you got next? Next for me is The Purple Rose of Cairo. Have you seen The Purple Rose of Cairo? Certainly have. Um, this is fantastic. It's so good. This is a fantastic movie Jeff about... Daniels. One of Jeff Daniels' finest. That's right. It's about a movie character. Yeah. In the context of the movie, a movie character. Right. Who comes out into the real world yes. and falls in love with this lady. Right. Kind of the opposite of Last Action Hero. Sure, sure. Last Action yeah. Hero is a boy from the real world right. gets sucked into a movie. Mm -hmm. This is the opposite. This one, he a comes movie out of the movie into the real world. Comes into the real world. Yeah. And he's very kind of wide-eyed and optimistic. And the world at the time is very, like, grim and gritty yeah. and kind of gross. Right. Uh, it was made in mid-1985. Mm. Um, yeah, it's... It's really good. It's really good. It definitely has that that the romance I think between the two leads really works and mm -hmm. kind of carries the movie, mm -hmm. and then kind of what it's saying about uh, like vintage, uh, uh, romanticized mm. senses of morality and how yeah. that works in real life. Sure, the contrast to that is really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, it has some fish out of water kind of humor sure. here and there, sure. uh, but yeah, the Purple Rose of Cairo, it's uh, it's it's very it's very very cool. I would agree. I would have to agree with that completely. I think it's really good. It's, again, another one that's kind of made for movie fans, you sure. know? Sure, yeah. Um, if you're a fan of the cinematic art, mm -hmm. I think you're going to get a lot out of that. Um, it's really... Uh, yeah, the two lead performances are, are very memorable and very fun and, mm -hmm. and very real and authentic, you know, great characters. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and they definitely learn a lot from each other. For sure. Which is great. So... All right, we're going to move on now um, to one that's a little more modern. Okay. Um, it's called 16 Blocks. 16 Blocks is, to me, the most underrated, underseen Bruce Willis film. Okay. It might be his best film. It's, on, it's right up there with Die Hard and Looper. Better me. than Bonfire of the Vanities. It might be. It might be. <laughs> <laughs> that was almost on my list. It's not hard. It's not hard to be better than that. I like that movie. It's but pretty good. Anyways, um, it's another <laughs> podcast. Uh, 16 Blocks is, in my opinion, the final Die Hard film. Okay. I call it Die Hard on 16 Blocks. Okay. <laughs> it's my alternate title. Because yeah, you have Die Hard. Die Hard, die hard with plane, a vengeance. Die Hard you know, on a bus. Live for your Die Hard. Right. <laughs> a good day to Die Hard. Yeah. And Die Hard they on all 16 should have had, They all should have had like distinct locations. They should have. Um, but he's playing a cop again. A world-weary... Yeah. Cop, ready to retire, mm -hmm. on the verge of retirement. Sure. When he's tasked with, hey, you got to take this witness to this crime to the courthouse. It's 16 blocks away. And he's like, all right, whatever. <laughs> and then chaos ensues. Yeah. Everybody's coming after this witness. They got to kill him because he's witnessed this crime. He's going to take put out this, uh, this crime family, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. He's going to put them all behind bars. And uh, so Bruce Willis is the only guy who's there to protect this witness. And the witness is played by Moss Def, who is a rapper, who became an actor. A lot of people know him from uh, Italian Job. Mm -hmm. He's in that. He's fantastic in this. He, his performance is also wonderful. Great. The the, the two-hander between the two of them, mm -hmm. this odd couple yeah. pairing, it, it's one of the best. Great. Awesome. Easily. And uh, all the other actors do a great job. This is directed by the late, great Richard Donner. Hmm. Superman, of The course. Goonies. Yep, he's excellent. I mean, he's one of the best ever. 16 and, Blocks. And he did 16 Blocks. One of his last movies he ever directed mm. before he passed away. And uh, it's easily, in my opinion, one of his best. It, the, the action in it, the, the intensity, the edit, it's a tight run time. You know, it doesn't, mm -hmm. it's not like one of these two hour movies. It's like 90 minutes or something, really short. And uh, just the performances, the what the characters go through. Again, together, it's kind of about that relationship building and all that. It's 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 one of those just kind of sweet, perfect cop films mm. and a per, cop buddy films, but they're not both cops, hmm. you know. Yeah, um, that sounds great. It's it's I'll got some comedy. It. It's got some it. comedy, but it's pretty intense. Huh. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's like an action thriller. Yeah, you know? it's pretty intense. Yeah. Kind of. That's good. Pace. That's what you want is that balance. Absolutely, really. absolutely. So it makes it fun. So sixteen blocks. That's sixteen blocks. That's my next pick. Okay, good pick. Next for me, I'm going to go with a movie starring a little-known actor named Tom Cruise, oh. who I don't think many people have heard of. 
Yeah. Uh, I'm kidding, of course. Tom Cruise <laughs> is the biggest guy ever. Um, this movie is The Last Samurai. Oh, uh, yeah. Definitely his most underrated. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Tom Cruise, other than maybe Legend, which I also love Legend. <laughs> you shouldn't pick Legend. Legend. legend I Let's was, talk about Legend. I was Switch on it fence. to Legend. Switch it to Legend. Is, is Last Samurai <laughs> too well known, you think? I don't know. Because I want to talk about Last Samurai just Let's for a little bit. Let's talk about Last Samurai. Because, because Samurai. Tom Cruise is in a samurai movie. Yeah. He's, he yeah. is the last samurai. I know. And it takes place during the Civil War. Right after. Yeah. Like, like this, right. like, you know, there's mm-hmm. guns mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. there's, yeah. you know, all this conflict going right. on. Right. And he, like, has the samurai armor and he's yeah. got the sword and everything. It's so yeah. cool. It is. It's, it's crazy. It's such a weird idea uh-huh. that is, like... There was a little sliver of time, historically, yeah, sure. where this could have actually happened. Yeah, 100%. Um, and it's really neat. It, it has awesome action. Great it's, action It's scenes. just a big, like, uh, big kind battles. of epic, yeah. epic uh, scale. Right. Um, and, yeah, like I said, one of, one of the movies he's done that is like, how do I not know that Tom Cruise was in a samurai yeah, movie? It's definitely the one that gets talked about the least. Sure. Unfortunately, because it is really great. Yeah. The historical aspects are great. It's very authentic as far as the Japanese culture at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ken Watanabe is in this. Mm-hmm. He's one of my favorite actors. Yeah. Um, it's a really good story. Yeah. It's really interesting yeah. what what he's going. It's it's a character story. It's all about him, his past, him kind of reconciling right. with it. Um, you know, kind of making up for. You know, past sins. That mm-hmm. whole idea mm-hmm. is there, um, and he's yeah coming into a totally new culture. He knows nothing about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's that kind of fish out of water element again. Fantastic film. Very yeah, well shot. For sure. Beautiful looking movie. Mm-hmm. Production design and everything is great in yep. it. So I'm I'm glad you picked it. I think it's a good pick. But um, I might have gone with Legend because I think I just Le- think Legend, Legend, Legend is also it's very totally good. different. It's it is one of those medieval. Legend fantasy. has some of the coolest like you know. What? Are you gonna pick Legend? Let's go. Let's go into. We're not, I'm not gonna pick Legend, <laughs> but we're gonna go into '80s fantasy right now. Okay. Okay. Because I think '80s fantasy, it's 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 the, it's the best era for fantasy films. Sure. Legend, Willow. Willow for sure. Conan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my pick, Dragon Slayer. Oh yeah, we're going with Dragon Slayer. I know you just saw this. Yeah, I did just see Dragon Slayer. Um, it doesn't sound and like then, you're very enthusiastic and then, I decided, about and then I decided not to put it on my list. <laughs> Here's the thing. Let me, let me I'm, I'm on the fence about, about Dragon I'm on the fence about it. Here's, let me try to convince you that Dragon Slayer is a great movie. Okay. First of all, 80s fantasy. It, it, why? I don't know why. I'm, I, I think it has actually a lot to do with Star Wars being so successful. Mm. And filmmakers recognizing that's a fantasy movie set in space. It's mm-hmm. not really sci-fi. It's fantasy. It's sci-fi fantasy. Right. So let's give audiences these great hero journeys. Mm-hmm. This is, to me, a great hero's journey. This sure. is a movie about a young wizard yeah. who's, who's really bad at being a wizard. Sure. <laughs> he's, he's not good Yeah, yeah. at the beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. And so the whole journey is he's having to come into his own and become his own man, and it's a coming-of-age story. Sure. Um, it's, it's one of these darker fantasy movies where... We got to talk about the dragon because the whole the whole central figure kind of here is the dragon, um, and the dragon. Well, as as George Lucas <laughs> always says, movies are special effects, right? But a special effect without a story is nothing. Exactly. The dragon is the special effect. Correct. It's maybe the Correct. most amazing dragon I've ever seen in a movie. It's the great Phil Tippett. Yeah. From yeah. ILM. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only reason this movie lost the best best special effects Oscar is because it was up against Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> Which you can't beat. So yeah, that um, movie's wall to wall, nothing but yeah. spectacular effects. That's great, but this movie has wonderful effects. The dragon's name is Vermithrax Pejorative, which they should have said a lot, but they I think they never say it. <laughs> they say it once or twice, but it's such a great name for a dragon. <laughs> Why do you name a dragon anyway? It doesn't really make sense. <laughs> but um, yeah, it looks incredible. It looks totally real. Totally believable. The way they shoot it is just fantastic. Yeah. Um, you rec- I mean, you recommend Dragon Slayer. Like, I, you, totally, you, you I totally, totally recommend you, it. You think it's a good movie. I think it's a really good movie. Peter McNichol, as the young wizard, I think is great. I think Caitlin Clark is fantastic. She is. In her role. She's, she steals the show to she me. She is wonderful. She's the only reason, movie. the only real reason besides the awesome dragon to watch the movie. 
I also I think the I think the musical score is good. Um, I think it's like I said, just cinematography in general is is well done throughout this film. Mm-hmm. It's well edited. Well, it has some, yeah, it's it has some amazing shots. For it sure. doesn't definitely has some really really good shots. It sets up an interesting world. I would have loved to have seen a sequel. Mm-hmm. Dragon mm-hmm. Slayer two, dr- slaying more dragons. Maybe they could have done a know, Disney Plus series like. that got canceled and then mm-hmm. wiped off the face of the earth. Like Willow. Like Willow. Too bad. Dragon. Yeah. I have I have issues with Dragon Slayer. Okay. I get it. Um, but we can talk I don't think about it's it. a perfect movie. I'm just saying. I think no, yeah, I think yeah. it's a well-made 80s fantasy film. My issue is my issue is I greatly dislike the protagonist. Oh, really? And he d- does not work for me whatsoever. Okay. okay. And that really threw the movie off balance for me. Gotcha. From the get-go. Gotcha. Um, so I have I have a lot of issues with that. I understand okay. why it's on the list. It's sure. definitely. An interesting piece of uh, ILM history. Oh yeah, um, sure. and like you said, eighties fantasy. There's nothing like it. It's so cool. Um, Guillermo del Toro stated uh, Vermithrax pejorative is his favorite cinematic dragon. Oh yeah, right next to. Uh, I, I wouldn't deny that. Right next to Maleficent and Sleeping Beauty. Mm. It's a good um, one too. It's a great one. Um, I better than Snake. It's also got Ian McDermott in it. <laughs> Did you know that? Yes. Emperor Palpatine. Emperor Palpatine as a, as a Christian monk. That's right. <laughs> totally opposite character. There's a line where he, he casts the dragon back into hell, yeah, and then he right. burns alive. That's right. It's pretty amazing. It's great. I mean, there's so many moments like that that just stand out to me, yeah. and just are memorable, and <laughs> I just love watching. Yeah. It's just a fun movie to watch. Mm-hmm. It's not a perfect story it's not a perfect i mean character. i think it's I not think, a character piece no i think if this you is had, a, this is a fun if, silly fantasy i think if film. you had made a few tweaks sure it could have been really awesome sure. it would have been like a classic i could see that i could see that if you just make a few tweaks yeah. just like change a few right. things mm-hmm. add a few scenes mm-hmm. or or i don't know i mean i have i have i have issues with it we'll talk about sure. at some point but yeah. um my next pick yeah what do you got is taika watiti's boy now, which, is, which is him as a boy. It's, it basically, it's, it, it's, <laughs> it's it, seems, it seems to be how he literally grew up. <laughs> right. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt that it was completely accurate. Yep. Um, boy is about this New Zealand kid mm-hmm. who has maybe the most destitute upbringing <laughs> ever, but it's also like wholesome. Yeah. Because he's a kid, right. and it's just all he knows, so mm-hmm. it's just kind mm-hmm. of cool. Right. He lives with all of his cousins in his little shack, yeah. and um, his dad comes back into town, yeah. played by Taika Waititi. Right, right. And uh, it's it's it has a lot of humor, yeah. but it's also kind of this father-son bonding sure. story. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, if you kind of understand Taika Waititi's sense of humor, then you'll kind of get it. That right. Jojo Rabbit yeah, thing, sure. where he kind of like... He uses dark things mm-hmm. as an undertone for the humor, yeah. and then it's it's really interesting yeah. the the way that he uh, sets up jokes and and does things in his movies. Yeah. Um, but boy, but the titular boy mm-hmm. um, is fantastic. Yeah. He's hilarious, right. and I love his attitude. The whole the whole like demeanor of the movie is very awkward. Right. Like there's a, one of my probably my favorite scene in the movie. He goes up to this girl he kind of likes, and he, he just walks up. He just walks up to her. She's like just sitting down. Yeah. Yeah. He just like walks up to her. He's like, "Hey, my name's Boy. His his name is Boy. <laughs> right, yeah. My name's Boy. You want to see my Michael Jackson dance moves?" <laughs> and then he, dead silence, does the dance moves mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like poorly. Right. <laughs> and then he, and then he says he did those moves at the Grammys. <laughs> And then she just like looks at him like, okay. <laughs> That's the scene. That's it's it. just great. To me, that Awkward. that embodies yeah. like Taiko Atiti as a person. 100%. Is that. Awkward. He's in his own head. Funny, silly. Yeah. Yeah. It's all it's all from his deranged mind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Taika, by the way, in the movie, yeah. his character, I think his name is Shogun. Yeah, right. Cuz he says, "Don't call me dad." Yeah. <laughs> I'm too young to be a dad. <laughs> Right. Call me Shogun. Yeah. What's a Shogun? Yeah. It's like a master. <laughs> a cooler. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's a good one. Yeah. It's a fun movie. Yeah, boy, Definitely cool. worth watching. Very New Zealand uh, mm-hmm. comedy there. Um, it's interesting because it, to me, Taika's movies have just gone downhill from Boy. It's and, really yeah. weird. I've never, yeah. I've never really seen that happen to someone's yeah. filmography. Yeah. 
where it's like every movie he releases older people is pretty much right there with boy for me just gradually starts to decline <laughs> yeah, in starts quality to get off. even even i mean it's relatively gradual in the beginning right, right. but it just takes a steep yeah just I, the ragnarok it yeah. just really took a nosedive um <laughs> all right so now we're on to my next pick which is going to be another western mm-hmm. from 1950 okay it's called the furies Furies, okay. The Furies, okay. The Furies is a film by Anthony Mann. Yep. Directed several westerns I like. Okay. The Naked Spur, The Far Country, several others. And what he did with this film, it's an adaptation of a book. Okay. Stars Walter Houston and Barbara Stanwyck as a father and daughter. Mm-hmm. Who, um, you know, he's he's got no son, so his ranch empire that he's built is going to be passed on to her, whoever she marries. Right. So it's all about who he wants her to marry, who she wants to marry. This mm-hmm. whole f- fighting going on in this family, very dysfunctional. Um, the film focuses on that relationship centrally. Uh, focuses on the ideas of, of greed, um, mm-hmm. of, of love. Yeah. Uh, it becomes sort of a revenge story. Okay. Uh, in the second half of the film, riveting film. Yeah. Riveting, I mean, just so well made, so well shot. Hmm. The editing is great. There's this great montage in the middle of the movie that's really well done. Great very use cool. of music. Very well written. Um, the two lead performances are just really, really stellar. Yeah. Uh, that I think anyone who's a fan of westerns, you know, if you're a fan of Yellowstone, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know, Horizon that's in theaters now, right. um, you're definitely going to like this, I think. it's Because okay. it's a family-oriented kind of... Uh, drama about mm. you know legacy yeah. and yeah. you know that kind of thing uh inheritance mm. you know, all that kind of stuff is, is dealt with in this movie so highly recommend the furies uh the criterion box set comes with the book so i'm going to start reading the book mm-hmm. soon because i just rewatched the movie not too long ago and just found it to be even better than i remember yeah. so yeah. definitely wanted to include that awesome. one on the list good pick all right, what you got next? We're coming down to our last three here. We're at number 17 already. Oof. So you only have three other picks. So what are, what are you going to throw in there for your last <sighs> final three? It's going to be tough for me. I know. I've got a few here that I'm trying to work through. I've got to, um, I've got to include Sky High. Ah, oh, yeah. To me, yes. Sky High is a must. I really yes. should have been on a little bit earlier, but yes. um, Sky High, this is a Disney movie. It is. Disney Live It's on Disney Plus film. right now. You can watch it. That's right. Um, we've talked about it before in our list of favorite non-comic book superhero that's movies. Right, that's right. Um, Sky High has this great, like, classic superheroes mm-hmm. world mm-hmm. where um, their their costumes are just, like, iconic looking. Very bright and colorful. They're very bright and colorful. Very, like, uh, yeah. stylized. Right, right. Very comic booky. Mm-hmm. If it, this film almost... More than any other film, yeah, feels like a comic book come to life. For sure, for sure. Kurt Brilliant Russell, Kurt colors. Russell is the commander. The way he yeah. talks, the way the way, it's funny the way they juxtapose the way the adults talk mm-hmm. with the way the ki- the kids talk like normal kids. Right. The adults all talk like they're in a comic book. Exactly. Very boisterous, over mm-hmm. the top. Oh yeah, it's, yeah. It's, they, it's they, really they smart. Kind of speak the in, in comic book like monologues. <laughs> it's like you can yeah. see the comic book thought bubbles. Basically, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's about their kids. It's about yeah. the, the next generation of heroes. Correct. And how they're different right, from right. their parents. Yes. Um, because classically you had this clear like division between superheroes and sidekicks. Yeah. And sidekicks yeah. were second class citizens. And, and their son. Kind of the, in this the world. The son of the two most popular heroes. Right. The commander of power. The commander in Jetstream. Right. You know. Yeah. They're about to <laughs> receive the award for greatest heroes. Exactly. Um, their son has no powers. No powers. And so he's a sidekick. He's he's demoted to sidekick. <laughs> right. So by Coach Boomer. So it's by another Coach, Bruce Campbell right. cameo. A great Bruce Campbell cameo. <laughs> really, whole character. He's in. Yeah, he's in the whole movie. Supporting character. Um, but really, yeah, it's about this group of kind of high school weirdos. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got Magenta who can shapeshift, but only into a guinea pig. Yeah, yeah. They all have like lame powers. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, it's very cool. And then you have War and Peace. His name is War and Peace, and that's pretty cool. Yes. He has fire powers. He just shoots fire. That's it. Um, he's a sidekick by choice. I, yes. I think he's a hero, actually. Right. He's in the hero class, yeah. but it's very cool. It's mm-hmm. it's awesome. Um, everybody has an interesting arc. 
Yeah. Everyone's changed by the end of the movie. Oh yeah, 100%. and has come into a, a different place than they were when they started. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Sky High is just phenomenal. Tons it's so fun. funny, very and funny. so cool. Yeah, uh, the special effects are like kind of amazing. They do a lot practically in the yeah, movie, which yeah. is cool. A lot of really interesting. A lot of great sets, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. And it's super funny. It's it's very funny. It's like a high school. High school movie. It's a high school comedy with yeah. superheroes. Right, basically. right. It's like yeah. Ferris Bueller was right. the son of Superman. Yes, yeah. exactly. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. It's very cool. I highly recommend Sky High. Definitely, definitely. It's highly so- recommend Sky High. Would you say <laughs> you would re- recommend it as high as the sky? <laughs> um, the sky is the limit. They still need to make Sky High to save you. Save you, yeah. Save awesome. University. I'm all for that. Um, still waiting. Disney Plus, hey, Disney Plus is cranking out content. Like, it's not. <laughs> you know what I mean? That is certainly true. So, they're they cranking out it. content. Uh, that's for sure. Not art. <laughs> um, art. I'm going to go with uh, another older movie from 1950. Also from 1950, just like The Furies. It was a uh, 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 film noir. Mm. A unique kind of film noir. A little known um, movie called Casablanca. <laughs> no one's ever heard of. <laughs> that would be great if I picked that. Just that ran- so like good. randomly pick Citizen, Citizen, Citizen Kane. Kane, the most popular movie ever made. Um, no, it's called Gun Crazy. Okay. <laughs> I've, I've actually have heard it. I think I may have seen have it. Have you seen it? I think so. You gotta watch it. I've got it right down there. Yeah. It's one of Leonard Malton's favorite noirs. Mm. Uh, the mm-hmm. great film critic Leonard Malton, who we're big fans of. Yep. Joseph H. Lewis directed it. He did another noir I also own called The Big Combo. It's okay. a good, good noir film. Okay. This is a unique kind of noir. In that film it's noir about getting a meal from McDonald's. Absolutely. The first ever big combo at That's right. McDonald's. That's right. Um, <laughs> no, Gun Crazy is... Um, <laughs> it's it's a different kind of noir film because it's not that kind of typical detective story. Mm. You know? Mm-hmm. Private investigator investigating a murder. This is about um, a married couple who... Yeah. Start a crime spree, mm, mm-hmm. and they're just devolving into madness. Okay, uh, it's so fascinating. Yeah, if you've seen movies like Natural Born Killers, Bonnie and Clyde, mm-hmm. all those owe a lot to Gun Crazy. Okay, uh, it, it's super well shot, well edited. The dialogue is great. The performances are so good. Peggy Cummings and John Dahl mm. play this married couple. And just to see their relationship, again, just kind of devolve into just the most debaucherous, insane, you know. Yeah. I mean, they just become complete thieves and murderers, basically, <laughs> throughout the whole movie. Yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting. It's really interesting. And it's what I like about these older noir films is that they, they always end with justice Come being up served yeah. in some way. Yeah. Um, and that certainly happens in this movie. It's very cool. really, really well done. It's one that no one talks about, mm, so I had to mm-hmm. mention it because it is one of my favorites of that era certainly. and that whole genre. So yeah. that's where that one ended up. All right, last two, Carson. You got you got uh, this, three, this three be, more. I have 18, three more? You have 18, 19, and 20 to go. This is 18. Okay, I thought this was my last one. No. Um, in that case, I'm going to go with Dread. Dread. Dread is really good. Um, not Judge Dread with Stallone. Not Judge Dread. This is the remake. That's right. Um, Dread has. It's so cool. It's based on a comic book. The Stallone one, by the way, it it has merit. I have never seen it. You need to watch it. <laughs> it's not as good as Dread. It's it's not it's not even really the same tone. Yeah. But th- there's things about it I like. But this new one blows it out of the water. Yeah, Dread is fantastic. Dread. Um, it's uh, Carl Urban. Never takes off the mask. Never takes off the helmet. Whole movie. Yeah. You never see his yeah. face. True, true to the comic. Pretty much the opposite of Stallone. I right. think he wears the helmet at once. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's kind of why I don't want to watch it. Um, but this movie has kind of a The Raid premise where exactly there's the this motel building mm-hmm. and we've got to go up to the top and get the crime Mama. boss. Mama. Yeah. Um, and it's in this dystopian future. Mm-hmm. Where the judges are judge, jury, and execution. That's right. The police basically are in charge of all of, of all of justice yes. in the city. Yes. So they're called judges. They're called judges. Yeah. yeah. So we follow Dread mm-hmm. and his new like partner yeah. lady, who has like psychic Love abilities. Love that dynamic. Yeah. 
um, and they're kind of working their way through here. She's mm-hmm. she's green. She's never really done anything like this yep. before, mm-hmm. and Dred's been doing it forever. Right. So they're working their way up this building, and there's all these like problems that they run into yep. constantly, right. and all this awesome action that happens. Yep. And what makes it so cool is visually, it manages to have this drug that's that's kind of been like the epi- the drug epidemic in the city mm-hmm. is a drug called slow mo. Sure. So yeah. when you take the drug, literally, it's in slow motion. Yeah. Things are in yeah. slow motion. Right. Right. So you get some of the most like violent but kind of beautiful, insane shootouts mm. that are that are kind of in in halftime slow motion mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that are just really like art art artful and yeah. creative Definitely. and interesting. Right. Um. It's it's violent and it's aggressive, but it just has it's so cool. That's really I think what what drives the whole movie is just its its constant intensity and mm-hmm. its its pace. Yeah, that keeps it moving forward. Definitely. So yeah, it's very very awesome. Movie. Great film, great action movie, great sci-fi. You know, it's really really well done. Mm-hmm. Um, Robo. I wouldn't even call it a remake of the original. I would just call it a adaptation of the source material. Sure. Um, yeah. It's much more accurate to the search mm-hmm. material. All right, great selection. Now I'm going to move on to my next pick, which is... I'm surprised you haven't had this on there yet. Okay. Sing Street. Oh, okay. I'm glad you picked Sing Street. I didn't have that one on my list. Sing Street is one of my favorite movies. Sing Street's awesome. It's so cool. It's all set in Ireland. Mm-hmm. Um... The uh, the story is about this. It's another one of these kind of coming of age stories. Uh, it's you know got a lot of comedy in it. Also has a lot of drama in it. It's sort of his. It's the riddle of the model. That's what it is. <laughs> it's the riddle of the model. That's it. <laughs> it's a great way to sum it up. Um, John Carney wrote and directed it. Um, it's 1980s mm-hmm. Ireland. This Irish kid wants to start a band this to Irish impress a girl. Kid. That's it. That's it. And it's about his home life, mm-hmm. his relationship with his brother and his parents, and how kind yeah. of dysfunctional all that is. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, yeah, his friends and him are like, you know what? We're going to make it big as a rock band. <laughs> yeah. You know, they see all these MTV music videos. Right. And they're like, yeah. we're going to make our own music yeah. videos. Yeah. So they get out the old VHS camcorder. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's, it's just really fun. It feels very authentic. Yeah. You know, I feel like the guy who wrote and directed this, this is probably what he did when he was younger. Yeah, yeah, for it sure. It very much feels like one of those it's types movie of full movies. of full of passion. A lot of passion. Yeah, a lot passion of for art, for music, mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. cinema. Yeah. Uh, it's all there. Definitely. And uh, this is, you know, this is one of these kind of independent, low-budget movies, $4 million. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it really did a uh, great at the box office, actually. It grossed $13 million. Mm-hmm. Uh, considering the budget, that's pretty good. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I think you can stream it now. You get the Blu-ray. That's what I've got. Definitely check it out. Yeah, it. Sing Street's it's super worth watching. Super fun. It's the same guy that did another movie I like called Once, and another one you like. I still haven't seen Begin Again. Oh, Begin Again, very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. love Begin same, Again. Same director. Very cool. So I almost had that on my list. Really talented guy, <laughs> and uh, yeah, definitely worth yeah worth checking out. It's got a lot of a lot of good performances in it. So. Mm-hmm. Check it out. All right, what do you got next? Next for me is a beloved, beloved film I've, I've seen recently oh. um, that it's quickly becoming one of my favorite Jack Black movies. My next pick is Be Kind, Rewind. Oh, yeah, I've got to see this. You've got to see Be Kind, Rewind. Oh. The premi- it's a Jack Black movie. Yeah. The premise is uh, Jack Black lives in a junkyard and <laughs> hates the man. Yeah. Okay. As always. And his <laughs> friends. the same character from School of basically, Rock. Basically, <laughs> might as well be. Might as well be Dewey Finn. I don't know. He's a little too active to be Dewey. Okay. Finn. Okay. Um, so his friend works in a video store. Okay. And. Uh, Most death. Yes. That's right. From 16 blocks. That's right. Yes. Interesting. Uh, he works in a video store, and uh, by happenstance, Jack Black gets magnetized. Because of because of oh, this the junkyard that makes sense junkyard sure. uh, hijinks that he's doing I buy it yep um, and he walks into the video store and erases all the tapes <laughs> so all the tapes are blank right so what they have to do is before the the owner of the video store gets back from vacation <laughs> they have to remake every movie in the video store from home it's great 
And it's it, it. at first it sounds like like silly like right, this right. could never like this is like makes no sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's because the only person renting videos from their store is an old lady who's never seen a movie before. <laughs> so they start being like right. She actually like thinks this thinks is the this real is the Ghostbusters. Movie, yeah. <laughs> and they're remaking like movies, like yeah. popular movies. Big movies, yeah. Um, and it's it. it's just it's just great. It's a genius it's, premise. It's really a and it becomes more about their community. Yeah, sure. And I want to be in the movie, and I want to mm, I want to help cool. out, and I want to yeah. whatever. That's great. And it becomes a really good uplifting right. um, story about community mm-hmm. and about our love of cinema yeah. and why making movies is so fun and yeah. why we love to yeah. to work together to do this stuff. Yeah. So, Be Kind Rewind, awesome, excellent movie. I'll definitely be checking it out for sure soon. Alrighty, down to our last two. I've got my last two here. You've got your last one coming up. That's right. Um, I'm going to go with a Francis Ford Coppola film. Mm. What I think is his most underappreciated movie. That would be Tucker, The Man in His Dream. This one, this one was close to being on my list. Was it really? Yeah. This is such a great movie. It's one of Jeff Bridges' best performances, I think. For sure. He's playing a real guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, this guy Tucker, uh, making his own cars back in the 1940s. That's right. And going up against the big corporations, mm-hmm. um, and what he had to go through. It's really interesting. It's, it covers a lot of his family life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a very kind of like Walt Disney. Yeah. Uh, that vibe? Tucker, a man in his dream. Yeah. It's yeah, kind of like yeah. he's the dreamer. Exactly. He has all these amazing Entrepreneur, ideas. Yeah. You know, he wants to do this. Mm-hmm. And, facing all kinds of obstacles oh, all yeah. the time yeah. has to overcome mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and and it's really it's really good it's really kind of inspiring uplifting story oh, yeah, for sure uh, definitely very well shot the, the the whole aesthetic of that that era is there mm-hmm. in full force mm-hmm. I love the cars of that era they just yeah. look so cool and they look amazing and especially uh, Tucker's cars definitely incredible looking vehicles so it's a great pick huge fan of that movie again Francis Ford Coppola one of the most prolific popular directors ever godfather Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. apocalypse now yeah done so many great movies but this is just the one of his that i feel like for whatever reason hasn't talked about enough so i had to Mm -hmm. have it on here somewhere so that's where it ended up an excellent choice your last pick for our best hidden gems what do you got well the last choice on my list is the last starfighter (laughs) yes Love it. The premise of The Last Starfighter is uh, a kid living in a trailer park who loves this arcade machine called The Last Starfighter. Okay. Eventually beats the high score yep. and realizes that not only has he beaten the high score, <laughs> but he has signaled a real-life <laughs> alien spacecraft right. who sent this machine down to recruit pilots. That's it. And he's recruited to the actual Star Force to become a pilot. Great. Great idea. It's super cool. (laughs) Um, It's got cool aliens. Awesome, like, special effects. Sure. Um, It's it's a kind of just, like, uh, the plot is very, like, straightforward, just, like, help us stop the alien threat story. Right. But it's it's really that initial premise of this is just an ordinary kid, and he's trapped in, in this cool, like, video game world that's actually real like yeah. you know and his but his skills... real life is super dull and boring exactly he's exactly. in this trailer park yeah. he's yeah. got him and his brother there and right it's right. like the most dull thing <laughs> and then he's transported into space and yeah. like whoa yeah, yeah. he's kind it's of really cool it's very, very like Luke Skywalker longing oh yeah thing oh, yeah. where he, he sure. is called to adventure so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah The Last Starfighter it's a little known movie, but it's it's very cool. It's got Tron elements. It's got oh, like yeah. it's um, got that CG, the early day CG. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. yeah, awesome, awesome movie. Blast definitely, Starfighter, definitely worth a watch, and I think worthy of a remake. Okay. I would watch a remake. Of interesting. This. I think this could make a really interesting modern movie. I mean, if they do, if they do like what they did with Tron, yeah, and they do like a Last Starfighter legacy right, thing, right. It could be cool. The first Starfighter. The legacy Starfighter. <laughs> <laughs> so, you watch the last Starfighter first. Right. The first then Starfighter the last. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> great choice. Great choice. Great movie. I really like that movie a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. Had a lot of fun watching that over the years. All right. My last pick. It's another one that I've only seen recently. Okay. It's another one starring the great Kirk Douglas. Dougie. It's an 
adaptation of a Jules Verne novel. One that I haven't read. One of the few Jules Verne novels I haven't read. From the Earth to the Moon? Read. No, I've read that one. Um, this is called... The, 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 actually, the, the book is titled The Lighthouse at the End of the World. Okay. The movie, That's not the movie. The movie was retitled The Light at the Edge of the World. That's, that might be a cooler title, actually. I think it's a little better. But um, cool. it does all take place uh, in and around this lighthouse. Okay. So the whole film is one location. Uh, Kirk Douglas is helping the guy who's running the lighthouse kind of run it. And um, all of a sudden, none other than Yul Brenner shows up. Okay. Who, of course, we know is Ramses from Ten Commandments. Way back in the day. Right. Uh, you couple... say Ramses, my mind jumps to Nacho Libre. <laughs> but yes, from Ten Commandments. <laughs> right. Ramesses. <laughs> the Pharaoh. <laughs> the Pharaoh. Um, but this movie's made in 1971, so it's, it's a couple decades okay. past that. Right, right. And uh, Kevin Billington More than a couple decades this. before Nacho Libre. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> but I like this movie a lot. It's, it's very simple, mm -hmm. but it's a lot of fun to watch. It's kind of, you know, after the pirates invade, becomes this sort of... He has to evade the pirates, mm -hmm. and he has to uh, kind of survive on okay. his own. And it's just one of these really classic, adventurous Jules Verne tales. All right, so, uh, yeah, it's a great movie. If you're a Vernian, like I am, <laughs> um, you will uh, greatly a, a enjoy... A Vernhead, <laughs> like a Potterhead, a Vernhead. Um, you'll greatly enjoy the light at the edge of the world. Uh, again, Keenan Lorber has a great Blu-ray. That's how I watched it. Kirk Douglas is in true form fantastic throughout this film that's great yul brenner makes a great villain mm. as always mm. and uh it's it's a it's a movie all shot on location yeah so that makes it even more interesting and exciting and, and just you know visually kind of stunning as it's all you know shot on the shore I'm particularly psyched out and of my mind about this i am it, it's it's really fun really cool <laughs> fun movie to watch yeah. um that's great that uh, i think i think people will get a kick out of if you're looking for a good classic adventure movie the light at the edge of the world the light at the edge of the world 1971 that's very cool great movie all right folks that is it for our favorite cinematic hidden gems that's right now we want to know your list in the comments below and we want to know which list you would take uh, if you're going to a deserted island or something sure um, yeah which of these lists are you most interested in who had the best pitches if you're uh you know, looking to watch one of these movies, sure, the yeah. best, which yeah. movies were the most interesting to mm -hmm, you? Mm -hmm. Let us know in the comments down below. Make sure you join us next week for Real Movie News. We're going to be breaking down all the new trailers and all the new movie news. Uh, we're also going to be seeing Twisters this week. So you'll be getting <laughs> a reaction to <laughs> Twisters. I just watched the trailer for Twisters. Is that it was the greatest theatrical experience since Top Gun Maverick. Wow, high praise. Got to get those Maverick fans in hey, there. You got Glenn Powell. You're going to get a Glenn lot of Powell. butts and seats. So, Glenn Powell. Um, we'll have to wait and see how it is. We'll give you a reaction to that uh, very soon. Um, next week, we got Deadpool and Wolverine. It's a big summer, folks. <laughs> it's a big and summer. Summer is here. Sure. So we're ready to break it all down for you. Uh, we're going to be doing an epic x-men movie podcast x-movie um, podcast man it's gonna be big mm -hmm. extreme every x-men movie reviewed and ranked wow it's x gonna be every x-movie that's right extreme so. ranking <laughs> 10 <laughs> that's right because the x so thank you again so much for joining us uh make sure you hit the like button hit subscribe at the bell so you get notified of all our videos and we'll see you next time right here on the real world <laughs>